welcome to Inspiration Rising. My name is David Trotter, and I'm a transformation coach dedicated to inspiring women and the men who support them to rise up in life, love, and leadership. Well, as you know, we are living in an unprecedented time right now, and I want to do whatever I can to help you and your family and friends thrive. We are all being impacted in big ways, and our family is no different. My wife is supporting her kindergarten students via video teaching. My son's a junior in high school, my daughter a junior in college, and they're both doing online learning now. In fact, we're helping my daughter move out of her dorm this week. And all of these changes can feel disrupting and overwhelming and disappointing. In fact, I was super excited to host the Inspiration Rising live next week with three inspiring female leaders interviewing them, them interviewing me because of my new book launch. But obviously we had to cancel it. And that's when I realized that I can do something to help us all. And I've created an event, an online resource really, called Cultivate Peace in Times of Dis-Ease. I invited nine female thought leaders to share their wisdom in response to the anxiety and fear of the coronavirus. And the featured guests include Morgan Harper Nichols, Reverend Sarah Heath, Stacey Robbins, Kate Crocco, Bailey T. Hurley, Lori Beth Aldridge, Dr. Lindsay Elmore, Christy Clover, and Kelsey Chapman. These are nine women that I highly respect. They're very inspiring, and you don't want to miss these video interviews that I have with them. I also have made the audio available for you. And this is a free online resource. You can get it at insporising.com slash peace. It's insporising.com slash peace. Well, today I'm excited to introduce you to Ali Casaza. She's the host of the Purpose Show podcast, and she's also known as the Life Minimalist. You may be aware of uh, some of the online courses that she's created. She's earned international attention for those. She just has a fresh, practical lifestyle strategy that she shares with moms. Her and her husband, Brian, actually live here in Southern California with their four young children. Today, we're talking all about how to make your home a place of harmony during this unique experience that we're all living through. And I believe you will be inspired to not only declutter your home, but declutter your life as you hear from Ali Casaza. Well, Ali, thanks so much for taking some time to hang with us today. I really do appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate you making space to have me share. Yeah. So we are talking about this right in the I guess the beginning of the coronavirus chaos that Mm -hmm. um, the U S we're recording this in mid March, 2020. Um, What's going on with your family? How are you guys doing? Like give us the lowdown on what's going on for you. So it's really crazy over here. We're not in Los Angeles. We're like outside of Los Angeles, kind of in between there and San Diego. I have heard that LA is extremely crazy right now. Um, But it's, it's pretty chaotic here. Like we, you know, we have four kids of a big family and I went to the store to get bread and I was getting my usual amount of bread. And this man made a comment to me, like, you're a hoarder. Like you're so selfish. I was like, I, I didn't even connect it. I'm like, what the heck can I buy? I literally just had like a bunch of bread and like almond milk, like if five cases of almond milk and like five loaves of bread, which is like yeah. what I get for a week. <laughs> and, um, yeah, it just was like, geez, everyone's just like rude and snappy. But honestly, like we're doing good here. I I love having my kids home with me. I'm, I work at home. So I kind of feel like not much has changed about my regular life. Um, But I, I do feel like, man, it's really challenging me mentally and spiritually to like not contract this low negative energy. Like you can almost physically feel it in the air when you walk out there. Yeah. 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 My my son had a similar experience. He went to the store last night to get some uh, cookie dough and he ended up seeing this monkey bread, like in this frozen food aisle, you know, he's 17. He's like, this looks good. And so they get up to the register and the guy in front of him had a big cart of items. And he had, I think a loaf of bread, hot dog buns, hamburger buns, and like something else. And the person said, you can only have one bread item, just one. And the guy's like, what? Like, I've got, it's not like I'm hoarding. Like, I just, they like, pick one. And he said, and the guy got super upset. And uh, he chose oh the hot gosh. dog buns. Just the hot dog buns. 
<laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. It's just so weird. Like I, I mean, I don't know. I'm seeing all this, all these empty shelves and then they're getting restocked right away. Like I'm not noticing that there's a food shortage as of now, Yeah. but my gosh, like everyone's just, everyone's just on edge and they don't know how to be and they're taking out on everyone around them. And it's just kind of hard to be normal and carry on. And mm -hmm. my business, like what I do every day, it needs to carry on. Like it, mm -hmm. it, especially now. So I'm trying to be normal, but it's, it's hard not to contract this like negative vibe out there. Yeah. Yeah. And a lot of what you talk about is feeling unburdened to feeling uh, a lack of um, clutteredness in not only our physical space, but our emotional space, our schedules and so forth. Yeah. Do, do you think that this um, forced home experience will help people in that way? Will it draw their attention to how their lives have been cluttered? Like, what do you think is going to happen to people by having this forced home experience? Yeah, I think that's a really good question. I'm seeing it right now in my in my DMs and in my email. Um, people are noticing. I think that when you get stuck somewhere, whatever your problems are with that thing are, you know, magnified. And so people are realizing, I really don't want to be here. I really, I feel really depressed just being home. And this is where I live. And I mean, most people, the biggest part of their expenses every month is their home, whether that's a mortgage or a rent. Right. Um, and so or do you even like it? Like you're paying all this money for it. Do you even, is it even set up to serve you in the way it's supposed to? So I think people are noticing that and they're coming running to me, which I'm happy and ready to help. But it's like, you know, I think that this is, you can see it as this huge problem. You can see it as I'm stuck and using all these negative words and all this, or you could see it as an opportunity. You can see it as an opportunity and take the time there. You have your family, like rally together, make your home a, a space that actually is worth every dollar you're spending every 30 days. Like show up for yourself and your family and your life and use this time. You're stuck at home. Well, make it an opportunity. It is right in front of you. You're just not choosing to take it that way. Hmm. What are some practical tips that you could give people if they are feeling like, oh, I don't, I'm stuck here for probably three, four months, maybe, you know, and I don't like yeah. what I'm surrounded by. What are some practical steps that they could take? Like, what's the first thing you would suggest for them to do? The bathroom. I always say to start in the bathroom because it decluttering can be really overwhelming. Like a lot of people really struggle. They they don't need more decisions to make. Um, and they just, they feel like they're going to do it wrong, which is not true. Like you're really, you're not going to do it wrong. Um, but it, the bathroom is a great place to start because not a lot of people keep like really sentimental items there or anything that's like, I mean, unless you've got a weird way you lay out your house, <laughs> it's typically just, you know, it's like old bars of soap and broken hair tools and makeup from forever ago, whatever, you know, what have you. Um, and it's easy. It's easy yeses and nos. And momentum is really big when you're working on something that's out of your ordinary. And getting the bathroom done with ease, easy yes, easy no, you know, trash or keep. There's really no donate pile from the bathroom because nobody wants your donations from your bathroom. <laughs> um, and so making those easy yeses and no decision feels really good. And then your bathroom is done and you feel like you accomplished something. Yeah. And so that kind of momentum can help you like, okay, I can do this. This is good. This feels really good. I'm going to go on to like, you know, that closet that's been bothering me for two years or whatever is next for you. Mm -hmm. Okay. So they start in the bathroom. I even think if you don't have a shower door, like if you have a curtain, maybe even just replacing the liner and replacing the curtain. I mean, that's an easy purchase on Amazon. Yeah. I doubt they're running out of shower curtains and liners right now. Right. But that, that could show up at your house the next day um, or zip down to Target. It just feels like a fresh environment even. Just maybe totally. add some color or something. Yeah, or like a new bath mat, something like it's it's silly and it's small and it feels silly to even talk about this during the coronavirus stuff, but this is what matters. Right. I mean, it really, it's just a small thing. Um, it's always, I always share this because it's so funny to me, but every single time we do like a big wave of my decluttering program, when we get a bunch of people in, I get the same messages over and over again. And they all say it to me like it's brand new, like it's weird. And I'm like, yeah, I've heard this a hundred times today, <laughs> but they always message me like, 
oh my gosh, I did the bathroom. I started with the first lesson and I did the bathroom yesterday and I, I had my coffee in there this morning because it's the only place in the house that I actually want to be. And they're like, is that weird? And literally, like, I can't tell you. I should have really? taken screenshots. How many times people are like, I'm spending my whole day in there today. I took my laptop and I worked from the bathtub today because no I want to be in there. Because like you don't realize it's normal to have a bunch of junk on your shelves and dust lining all that stuff. It's normal to have a closet that's super overrun with clutter. It's normal to make people make jokes all the time. Like, oh, the bathroom's down the hall. It's not that door. Don't open that door because you're going to get like killed by all the junk that falls. Like it's normal. And we don't realize because it's accepted that it's harming us. It, I mean, mm. studies show over and over and over again, especially in women, that we are very directly affected by the amount of excess in our physical spaces. If you were to get rid of it, you notice how much lighter you feel. Um, I mean, same thing with our closets, the studies that show that when people go into their closets and they've got boxes of old clothes that they're too big for, um, or remind them of somebody who's passed away or remind them of a time in their lives they really don't want to remember anymore. And they are just walking past it every day. Like it's nothing, but subconsciously you're being affected by that. Mm -hmm. So that's why when you get your bathroom purged, you want to have, you know, coffee next to your maxi pads or whatever it is <laughs> because it's clean. Yeah, like it yeah. feels good. It's clean. It's organized. It's better. It's lighter. Um, and so I say all the time to those DMs, what would happen when your whole house is like that? Right. Right. Yeah. So good. Uh, we keep a pretty um, clean, clutter-free home. And uh, our kids, as they were growing up, they didn't know anything other than that. And then when they would go to other friends' homes and there's just piles of paper everywhere or books piled up, they'd come home and be like, well, I can't even believe their house is like that. I go, yeah. I think, I think most people's houses are like that. It's normal. Yeah. We just yeah. accumulate so much stuff. Totally. My kids have been raised in this. I figured this all out for myself when I was really overwhelmed when my oldest was like three and a half. So they don't know anything else either. And the thing that they always notice, because we're kind of in those little years, is when they go over to a friend's house to play, you know, I'm always like, hey, let's, we're going to go home, but you got to help clean up first. And then like an hour later, they're done and they get in the car and they're like, that was the worst. It took so <laughs> long to clean up because here there's literally, there's one toy bin. It's a large toy bin in the main playroom and all of their toys fit inside of it. And if yeah. it starts to get too full time to purge yeah. and that's just our process. And so it takes two minutes to clean up if toys are everywhere, just two minutes. Right. Um, I mean, that's unless they've dumped the Lego bin, of course, because that's a whole nother ball ball game. But hey, we'll take it. We'll take yeah, that little yeah, mess yeah. versus like always pe papers and toys and junk and old trophies and old photo albums just thrown everywhere, you know? So they they say the same thing. Like, I'm so glad. Like, they, they get it. And I'm glad yeah. they get it because I'm hoping they carry this into their lives and they don't look back like right. on the therapist couch. Have you heard of Ali Casazo? That was my mom. So I'm a hoarder. <laughs> <laughs> totally. They That's go how fingers <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But they, they seem to get it. And I'm happy about that. I think that's the case with um, tattoos. Like I know you've mm. got some tattoos. I think, yeah, <laughs> I think our kids are going to be like, why would I get a tattoo? That's so uncool. Like my parents had tattoos. Yeah. <laughs> yeah my parents have tattoos. So like, that is so lame. <laughs> Even though it's on the rise, just because like we have them, our kids, I think our kids are going to be like, oh my gosh, like my friend got a tattoo and she's so lame. My mom <laughs> exactly. has tattoos. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So, so weird. Friends, if you're looking for inspiring reading material during your time of social distancing, I want to encourage you to pick up my new book, Empowered to Rise, The Secret to Embracing Your True Identity, Uncovering Your Superpowers, and Bringing Your Inspiration to the World. If you're ready to get unstuck and start dreaming again, this book is for you. You can order it on Amazon via a special link. Makes it easy for you. Insporising.com slash book. That's insporising.com slash book. Let's just say that people want to continue the process. They come out of their bathroom. Maybe what's next? And one of the things as I work with clients, you know, the challenge for them is, okay, I walk into the kitchen or whatever and they go, what do I do? Like, how do I make a value-based decision? How do I make some sort of decision on what to keep, what to donate, what to throw away? 
yes, this was my mom's. I just, it's corning wear. It's got the little blue flowers on it. I just have such good memories of it. I don't know. I can't get rid of that. You know what I mean? How do you help mm-hmm. people make decisions? Because they're, I think people are going to listen to this. They're going to start decluttering their home here just in the next week. Yeah. What do they do? How do they make these decisions? Well, I'll piggyback off of the same example that you just gave with the corning wear. You know, stuff like that comes up all the time. And I think use it. If it's so special to you and it's going to take up space in your house, use it. And if you're like, well, it's, it's ugly. Oh, my wife doesn't like it. Oh, we just, it's just, we're just not actually going to use it, but I don't want to get rid of it. Get rid of it. Like you're telling a story in your head that's not serving you because here's the fact, like no matter who you are, no matter how much you're at home, here are the facts. Your time is valuable and you are here on purpose one time. And what takes up your physical space will by nature automatically take up your time. So is that piece of Tupperware, that plate, that jacket, is it worth it to you? Are you wearing it? Are you using it? Are you eating off of it? Are you serving food on it? Like, are you using it? If you're not, what is the friggin' point? Like, I just don't, I don't get it. I, I think I've seen too much hoarding and I've seen too much. Um, I mean, honestly, it might sound funny or weird or dishonest, but I've literally seen marriages split up over mm. stuff. I mean, people have this un, unhealthy, unnatural obsession with their things. Mm-hmm. And so for me, I want to run the opposite. I don't want any part of that. I want to be so unattached. I do. I am sentimental. I do have sentimental things, but it's very few mm-hmm. because if everything is sentimental and special, then by definition, nothing is because mm-hmm. it means few. It means mm-hmm. rare, right? Mm-hmm. So you can't say that all, oh, all of the, everything in my closet, everything in my kitchen, everything for my mom is sentimental and special. Well, it's that you loved your mom. It's that you had a relationship with her and you miss her, whatever the situation is, but pick a few things and then put them to use, display them, you know, take that, that cup and put flowers in it, use it as a vase, like use the serving wear, whatever it is. Um, and so I think that we come back to the three key questions that are in my course, which are, when was the last time you used this? Which isn't necessarily like, doesn't need to be answered specifically like, oh, I remember on July 1st last year I use it's just about it's about gut checking mm-hmm. do you use it it's yeah. about kind of yeah checking in like well mm-hmm. you know you know if you're bsing yourself right? right right and then um really like do you love this I have a good friend that um has a row of she has like shelves of shot glasses from all around the world that she collected with her father when she was traveling with him when she was a little girl and he's okay. since passed away Hmm. So she, she lives in a tiny house on wheels, by the way. So she of all people, like she has to be really careful what she keeps and what she lets go of. There's only so much space. And she keeps those shot glasses everywhere she goes because they, she loves them. They bring Mm -hmm. her joy. She has given up wall art and books to make space for that wall of shot glasses from all around the world. She loves it. Mm -hmm. So that's a different story. And this is also why I hate the whole legalistic minimalism thing. Like this is how many jeans you should have. And this is the, here's the checklist. I see these on Pinterest all the time and I want to blow them up because they're so annoying. And so that is not the point. This must serve you for who you are. Hmm. I have a bigger wardrobe than most people might have that account themselves minimalist because of my job, because of my personality, because of my photo shooting and video shooting and all the things I do and speaking and everything I do. And I like clothes, but my kitchen not a solitary item in there that I don't absolutely need because I hate cooking really? and I want to okay. get in there and get out. Yeah. Um, so it's, you know, that that's Ali's version of minimalism. And I would never write that in a cheat sheet and tell you that this is how you're, you have to be. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the other question too is like, is this, is this helping you serve your purpose? Like it's a silly thing to think about when you're holding a stapler or something, mm-hmm. but really like, do you have three other staplers? Then that mm-hmm. one isn't, isn't helping you get rid of it. Mm-hmm. So if you notice, like my philosophy is very much about the purpose and the heart and the intent of how you want to live your life mm-hmm. and much less about like, well, how many genes does Ali have? How many mm-hmm. are I supposed to have? Well, what do you need? How do you mm-hmm. live? What climate do you live in? It depends. Yeah. So one I heard you ask was, um, when was the last time you used it? Two was, do you love it? And then three does, how does this help you serve your purpose? Or how does mm-hmm. it help? Yeah. How does it help you? Is serve it ser- your purpose? Yeah. Is it serving you and the purpose that you're living? Really? You're asking the question, how does this space serve you? How does this space serve your family during this time? How does this space serve you and you're working? Right. 
mm-hmm. all of those. What are some other things beyond decluttering that might be that people might need to be thinking about in terms of their physical space? Yeah, I, th- I mean, I'm big on decor. I love creating a space that feels really good, that like reminds me of who I am, who our family is. Um, pretty much everything in our home. I mean, I guess minus furniture, like the decor is like, we've gathered it from traveling. Um, I'm very proud that I started a, a company and a business that allows my family. We are a big family. So traveling is not cheap. Yeah. I'm very proud that I can travel with my kids based on what I started because we used to come from just, I mean, just being completely poor and broke. Um, and so that really brings me joy. Like just going downstairs and looking around and seeing the, you know, the guitar, the strap that my husband found at a vintage guitar shop in Nashville the first time we went there. And, you know, now we're, we're buying a, an Airbnb there right now because we love it so much. Like it just, it's like these memories. It's, it's sweet. The pictures that we have on our wall tell our story. Um, I mean, it's just very purposeful. So if you don't have things around you, like I see so much of the time, these women, especially that I work with these moms, they just got kind of thrown into motherhood and they're just, they've been in a reactive state of living Mm -hmm. for so long that having anything of enjoyment in their home and their lives is like a foreign thought. They cannot, Mm -hmm. they, they, these are the women that will either um, leave a review on my podcast that I'm so, so selfish. Oh, that God forbid they'd ever become as selfish as I am. Or they, they react positively and they're like, help, help me. <laughs> like it's one of two ways. Right. Um, and you know, I think it, these are the women that have a couch that was gifted to them by their parents, you know, 15 years ago, and they haven't ever had it reupholstered and they have no photos on the wall, except the ones that are from like dollar store frames that they hate. And I realize that there's budget things, but even in our brokest state, oh my gosh, even when we were so broke, I had touches around my home that made me happy. I never settled. Like don't settle. There's always another way. Mm-hmm. So I think that the way your home looks and feels to you is super important outside of clutter, but like the touches there. Mm -hmm. So as we're in this um, uh, time period, I I want us to now focus less on the actual physical environment and maybe how we're structuring our days, how we're spending our days, because people are now working from home. They've got their kids home. Mm -hmm. Uh, My wife's a kindergarten teacher. She, it sounds like she's not even going to go back to school at all. Like she's just going to be doing things (laughs) online, which just breaks her heart because she loves these little ones. And yeah. how would you suggest that we don't feel burdened, but at the same time, we're productive during this unique period of time? Yeah. So my favorite word when we're talking about this is intent. And I use it throughout my business in decluttering before you get rid of stuff or bring stuff in. What's the intent? for that room. What is that room going to do for you? For your calendar, you get an opportunity. You're going to say yes or no, and you don't know which one. What's the intent behind that event? Are is you being asked to speak somewhere? Does this feel aligned right now? Is there a project you're avoiding that you might say yes to that so that you don't have to work on your book or whatever the other thing is? I'm talking to myself in this moment. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> like I think it's like, what's the intent here? Why do I feel like I want to say no? Why do I feel like I want to say yes? And sometimes it's just a quick gut check and you're like, no, I'm good. I want to say yes. So this is awesome. Mm -hmm. And other times, you know, you really have to sit with it, but I think people are so afraid of disappointing everyone. They say yes so often. And we kind of live in like this yes culture right now. Like people feel like they have access to everyone all the time with, you know, um, direct messaging on social media. You don't even have to know somebody to reach out to them like a text message. And now there's video chat on DMs on Instagram, like, which is awesome for businesses that want to connect with their customers, but also kind of scary. Like people just feel like they can have whatever access to you all the time. And that's even forgetting text messaging, FaceTime, the fact that somebody has a few digits that reach you means that they expect you to respond all the time mm. quickly. Like, mm. I mean, it's normal for someone to get agitated with me that I didn't respond mm. in you know the same day. <laughs> um, and so I think it's about like, what's the intent here? You get to decide. Mm-hmm. Just because somebody has your username or your phone number doesn't mean that they get access to you directly all the time. So What is the intent behind you saying yes or no to something? How do you want to live? What's the intent you're setting for your schedule and your life? What are your priorities? Mm -hmm. And look at how you spend your day. Take a quick look at your calendar. 
is what's on there reflecting what you said is on your priority list? Or would an outsider look at that and say, your priority is pleasing everyone else. Mm. Your priority is your phone or Facebook or whatever. Um, And it's in fact, not your spouse, not your kids, not your faith, not your business, whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, I think that that is kind of at the root of everything that I teach in that. And then there's off branches of like, logically, what does it look like to take action on that? But I Mm -hmm. I really, it comes down to intent and boundaries and purpose. Mm -hmm. Now you have four kids and, uh, are you homeschool or have you been homeschooling them or were they going to public school? And now how has that, how has that changed in your life since the coronavirus chaos? Yeah, we've homeschooled our kids and, but you know, they're involved in things like they're Mm -hmm. involved in a lot of other things. And so it's like, everything is shut down. Um, and also like the biggest thing for me has been like, my gosh, we, I didn't realize what a outgoing full family we are. I mean, we go out to eat a lot and we can't right now. (laughs) So like, I think it's like not going to the park, not being able to just um, go like we would go off into somewhere like Chick-fil-A and let the kids run crazy while we sit with a lemonade and like go over a business decision or whatever Mm -hmm. it is. Not being able to do those things has been really hard. But I think in this in this time, letting go of any guilt with technology and just calling it, I got to get work done. We got to get other things done, like Mm -hmm. letting it be okay and releasing that has been really helpful. And then also, this is when I'm so glad that my kids know what it is to be bored. I think boredom is a gift for kids. I do. I mean, every time I say that, I get mean messages, but I think it's good for kids to be bored because I think that's how you discover who you are and what you like and what your Mm imagination is capable of. Mm -hmm. How, how are your kids getting bored? Like how, how is that playing out in your family? So just having tech limits, like they're definitely looser right now, but, um, you know, having tech limits and then saying like when it's over, like, okay, like free time, go do what you want. And then seeing like my daughter will gravitate towards art. My son will gravitate towards Legos and constructing something. My other son will gravitate towards putting his headphones in and listening, uh, to imagine dragons over and over and over again. Like he loves music. And then my littlest is the one that's like, mom, mom, mom. But that's okay because he's only five and he's still learning. And it's my job to make sure he has boredom in his life so that he can figure out if he wants music or building or art or something else. Like, you know, so it's a big part of part of our family culture to have white space in your day. Hmm. Now, a lot of families are not used to that. You know, you're used to that because you've got your kids at home and you're working Mm -hmm. from home. And so I hear you saying, all right, be a little looser on the electronics, on the devices, um, help them find some places of boredom. Mm-hmm. What, uh, what other suggestions would you have as an experienced homeschool mom for a lot of these moms that are listening are going, well, I don't want to call myself a homeschool mom. I'm an education, short-term educator at home mom, <laughs> you know? Yeah. What, what, what suggestions would you give them? I think just remove the pressure off of yourself. Like you don't have to be their teacher. I don't consider myself my kid's teacher. I'm their mom. I'm guiding them through life and we learn things together. And they also go to other programs with actual teachers sometimes of the day. And I've also had times where my kids were in school. So I think that like the idea of having white spaces for any schedule, any season, any family type. But I think also like lean into what feels right in the moment. Like I I don't know. Maybe it's just because I'm a kind of, I'm a really intuitive person. I don't know, but I kind of feel into the day. If we're just not feeling math that day, why do we have to like make it a screaming match and like sit down and do this and like it? Like, yeah, I'm not going to say, okay, we'll just go play Mario. Like, obviously I'm there. I'm not an idiot, but you know, I think sometimes there's a pressure to just get through the day and get stuff done and meet the schedule and meet the demands. You know, if there's a live stream I needed to do after we did math and math isn't working, just do the live stream first and come back to math after. Um, if we need to revisit math completely later in the evening after dinner and, and skip baths, we'll do that. Like whatever, whatever feels good because I want my kids to enjoy life. I want them to enjoy learning And, um, I'm really, I really don't want traditional education for my kids. So why would I bring that into our home and follow that Mm -hmm. footprint, you know? Right. Right. I know you've got a uh, workshop coming up called from hassle to harmony. Tell me about that and how people can take advantage of that. 
Yeah. Oh my gosh. I love this class. So we only open this class up about usually twice a year, sometimes only once. Um, and I love it because it is like, it's a, it's a load lightning class. So it's, um, attached to my paid course on burden, but we take a piece of it out and just give it away for free because not everyone can get into the course and that's fine. Um, but really what it is, is we got, we, we go over like rhythms and routine and schedule. And, um, there's a section of that class called quiet the noise. And it's all about the chatter, the outer chatter and like the text message alerts and your social media alerts and, um, all the technology and all the obligation and all the lack of boundaries that people have in their lives and just shutting it all off. Um, my phone settings are kind of weird. They're not like everyone else's phone settings and I'm hard to get a hold of. And I think it should be that way because you know, as well as I do, like, where is your purpose? It's right in front of you, right? It's not like, Oh wait, let me interrupt it and like take this call or reply reply to this text because that's social norm to reply within 10 minutes or whatever the statistic is. I think it's like three minutes or something (laughs) ridiculous. Um, and so like talking about that, talking about things that feel heavy that you didn't know were heavy and getting it off of your plate, removing it completely. Um, so by the time people go through that class, it really is. That's why I called it hassle to harmony is because it's like all the chaos that you were feeling that you didn't really know you were feeling is gone and everything just feels lighter and better. Um, Mm -hmm. And the link to that is, I'll give it to you for show notes as well, but it's just allycasasa.com slash harmony. Yeah. And I think if they just hit your homepage, they can click right through. Uh, to I think as so. Well. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It makes it, you're also the host of the Purpose Show podcast. Tell us about the podcast and why somebody, why someone should listen. Yeah. I love podcasting. I, I actually, I mean, just a silly side note. I feel like podcasting has given me so much freedom in my voice because I used to be a blogger for like 10 years and I would always get, get comments of somebody being upset at something that I said, cause they didn't read that it was a sarcastic joke. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I feel like when I podcast, I can like, you know, it's all on the tone. Yeah. So I feel like I get a lot less nasty comments. Now people can hear my tone and hear like, Oh, I think she's joking. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, um, my, my show is it's for everyone. We have so many different listeners. We have dad listeners. We have people that aren't even parents that listen, but it's really, I I made it for women, for moms. And it's, it's, it's like I said, it's like about lightening the load in your life and getting back to your purpose and what you're doing every day, whether you're a stay at home mom or you're a working mom. We've got listeners. This one listener is amazing. She has 11 kids and she's a single mom and she works wow. like she's just killing it. Like yeah. she's amazing. She's like, she's got all my courses. Like she's just a, an action taking problem solving mom. She's not a victim to her circumstances. And that is what the show is all about. I love it. You are a fireball of energy. What do you what do you do to just mellow out? Just to kind of just chill. Oh man. Uh I watch a show that I've seen a billion times. So it's just mindless. I like yeah. The Office or Parks and Rec or something yeah. at the end of the day. But I do, I meditate every single morning and I feel like that is where my energy comes from. <laughs> yeah, the, yeah. The peace and like just inviting God into the day with me and sitting in that. I mean, it just keeps me going all day long. I love it. AliKazaza.com. We'll have all of those links in the show notes, of course, to the podcast and the From Hassle to Harmony class. We we'll want to make sure that people sign up for that. One last question. If a mom is listening, anybody's listening, mm-hmm. and they're they're feeling anxious, they're feeling overwhelmed in the midst of this whole coronavirus deal, what would you say to them? Mm, I would say reframe, reframe this. This is, this is a lot, but gosh, you have such an opportunity. It is such an opportunity. I know people are getting pay cuts and you know, everything feels like it's just decreasing and it's hard. And I've, I've been there in other circumstances and I'm feeling the energy out there right now, but my gosh, what an opportunity at, at home, what an opportunity all around you. And, you know, I think that I think that like, you know, I don't know who's listening or what you're into, but when you talk about like being grateful and manifesting and focusing on the good and deepening your faith, whatever that looks like for you, it's all about seeing the good, even when there isn't very much. And then you get more good. What an opportunity to flex that muscle and choose gratitude in the midst of chaos when everyone's elbow jabbing each other over bread and freaking out about toilet paper. Like what an opportunity to just keep, I, that word just keeps coming to me. And I would encourage you guys just repeat that. Let it be your mantra. What an opportunity you have and just reframe it. Find the good. 
Awesome. Thank you so much, Allie, for taking the time. I appreciate it. Thank you. To learn more about Allie and her work, check out all her links in our show notes by swiping up on your phone now or going to our website, insporising.com. And if you found this podcast to be helpful, share it with a friend. Simply screenshot the episode, text it to a friend, and tell them to find Inspiration Rising on their favorite podcast app. I know this is a challenging time, but I want to invite you to see this as an incredible opportunity for your life. May your eyes be open to how this experience can actually help you and your family. May your mind be open to the new possibilities for your work and life. And may your heart be open to how the divine may speak to you through a gentle nudge.